happening? Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's LRD faculty webinar uh, focusing on the ACR, ACRL framework for information literacy for higher education. In today's session, we are going to focus on the frame that covers information has value. Next slide, please. Just as a reminder, the session today is being recorded and it will be posted to YouTube this afternoon and I will disseminate the recording to everyone who is registered, but anyone can view the recording on our YouTube page. Everyone who is attending the session live today will receive a certificate of attendance uh, early next week. Um, today, our frame is gonna be presented by Chris Englund. So uh, I just wanna welcome Chris aboard and uh, hand it off to you. Thank you very much. So uh, our presentation is on information has values and our main ideas that we'll be talking about today are information is valuable and powerful for several reasons, which we'll be talking about. Uh, second, to give proper attribution when using uh, sources from other individuals. Uh, three, access to information can be limited or denied by private creators. And as a caveat, distribution of information is not necessarily fair, free, or equal. So some of the skills that we'll be talking about uh, in information has value are the value of information, attribution, and ethical use, scholarly publication, access for uh, underrepresented and marginalized uh, uh, communities, information costs, and the whole idea of information costs something, so who pays and how. Uh, the framework, this framework says regarding the value of information, information oh, presents. Sorry yep. to interrupt, we have a question. No, I was gonna say that um, your slides are not advancing. Uh, they're advancing at this end. Oh, uh, we are not seeing the presenter page. Are you, are you saying? Uh, that we see the introduction slide. Okay, you see that and uh, are you seeing the next one? No, no. I'm uh, not really sure what's uh Let's try it. And while we work that mm -hmm. out, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or uh, just unmute yourself. Um, we will also have time for unrecorded questions and answers at the end. Okay, uh, what slide are you seeing now? The information has value the main. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that this, uh, it's, uh, okay. Imp uh, information has, let's try friend, current slide. Information uh, is that. Uh, we're still not seeing the presenter slideshow. We're just seeing. If you just want to work down the slides this way, I think because your text is big enough, we'll still be able to see it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, Chris can send the slides to me and I can distribute them to everyone who's attending today after. Okay. Uh, is this good? That looks like it's working. Okay. So uh, information has value and the main ideas we'll be talking about today is that information is valuable and powerful for s several reasons. Uh, you uh, need to give proper attribution when using sources you know, and access to information can be limited or denied by those who created the, the source. And as a caveat, distribution of information is not necessarily fair, free or equal. Some of the things that we'll be talking about in terms of skills are that we want to uh, teach our students the value of information, attribution, and ethical use, uh, scholarly publish publishing, information about access to underrepresented and marginalized communities, and information and the idea that uh, information can cost something. So, who pays and how? The framework in discussing uh, the value of information says that information uh, possesses uh, several dimensions of value, including as a commodity, as means of education, to influence, and as a means of negotiating and understanding the world. The flow of information through systems of production and dissemination is impacted by factor by interests of legal, social, political, and economic interests. 
And uh, some of the key points on information distribution is not all information is equal. Some information has more value than others. Uh, not all uh, information is free. Often the people who create the information expect to be paid for the work. And sometimes, uh, and sometimes it is worth paying more for the information uh, than uh, uh, necessarily getting information for free, uh, uh, particularly like uh, getting uh, your, your Washington Post every morning. Also, it's uh, access is not necessarily fair. Access to some information requires uh, users to pay, which uh, uh, unduly burdens those who are in a position that are uh, uh, less able to pay than, than others. And then give credit, cite sources and check copyright status. Just because you uh, can access it doesn't mean that you can use uh, the information uh, any, any way you want. In terms of learning outcomes, what we would like our students to learn is to uh, explain uh, why sources must be cited and how to cite them correctly, define what plagiarism is, explain uh, briefly the concepts of fair use and copyright violations, describe uh, different uh, uh, publication, uh, academic publication practices and the implication for access to scholarly publication, and information, explain why some groups or individuals may be underrepresented or systematically marginalized within systems that produce and disseminate information, identify situations in which uh, students may have to pay for information, recognize that all information costs something, and uh, information may be offered free by entities that uh, to engage in some sort of political, uh, economic, social persuasion in uh, exchange for the information. In terms of uh, teaching, the teaching aspect of the framework, uh, there are several classroom activities that uh, I think are particularly good, such as a uh, digital shred, thinking about digital privacy, ethical use of, uh, of information in presentations. And these, are, again, are uh, student presentations. Digital shred is uh, produced by the uh, library at Penn State University. Here is their, uh, the, their site. And it uh, deals with its privacy toolkit kit for librarians and educators to support uh, teaching on privacy issues. Next one is uh, thinking about digital privacy. And this is a lesson plan on the concepts of privacy and personal security and includes a debate activity on the uh, rewards and uh, uh, risk of convenience. In terms of uh, further classroom activities, uh, one produced by Oklahoma State is uh, Inform Your Thinking, uh, which is a library tutorial uh, on information has value. It's a video that explains the value of information and explains uh, the, its influence on information access. It covers uh, sources of information and student access to this information. The next one is ethical use of information and in presentations by a group called Te uh, Teaching Information Literacy Threshold Concepts. And this focuses on the need to acknowledge the value of information through an accurate attribution of sources. In terms of possible assignments that you can uh, offer your students, uh, such as uh, there are three that came that I uh, looked at, they were think pair and share, uh, why do library uh, databases exist, and uh, Google versus the, the Google versus database uh, challenge. Uh, these were all produced by uh, the University of Washington Libraries, and uh, you have the, the site address there. They uh, have a uh, think pair share is on the consequences of not using and the benefits of uh, recommended resources, uh, why, li why library databases exist, and uh, uh, that's another one of their activities. And then there's a competition between two groups, a, a group of students representing Google and another uh, group rep representing Academic Search Premier. And the whole idea behind the group, uh, be behind this activity is that uh, the two groups were competing with each other to produce uh, the most uh, in terms of uh, quality information to, uh, the, uh, to meet the assigned topic requirement. In terms of some of the uh, two of the main uh, resources that are available for this framework, there's ACRL Sandbox, and here is the address for uh, for Sandbox. It's sandbox.acrl.org, and then Project Cora, which is projectcora.org. Uh, for uh, information literacy Sandbox, it has activities to use uh, the framework and. Uh, 
in teaching and you may share your activities uh, you, in addition to uh, borrowing the, uh, and this is uh, a freely available for you, but you should uh, give attribution. And uh, in addition to, to, look, to using some of the activities in the framework, you may also uh, uh, share your own activities on, in teaching the framework. Also uh, with uh, Project Cora, which stands for Community Online of Online Research Assignments. This is an OER, uh, Open Educational Resource. And uh, it is a collaborative space for research assignments. It has uh, several reliable uh, research assignments, which is enhanced by user feedback and best practices. It has a teacher, uh, a teaching toolkit with resources such as uh, uh, pedagogy, uh, theory assessment, classroom activities, technology tips, uh, subject guide, citation tools, and information uh, literacy tutorials. And uh, to uh, briefly wrap up, uh, the assessment is right here. Uh, uh, you would, can link to the assessment. And uh, uh, this is a reminder that uh, you are uh, that we are recording this. And uh, the, the question and answer part of this is not recorded. And also, uh, you'll because you've attended live, you will get a uh, certificate. Uh, uh, Megan will uh, uh, send out the certificate to you. So uh, are there any questions? We're now in our question and answer period. Yeah, and yeah. while we wait for those to come in, um, I do want to say one of the phrases that has come out lately with, you know, the misinformation and fake news landscape is that the truth is paywall. Um, basically, essentially, that good information is expensive. Everyone quotes, you know, information wants to be free, but that's only the first part of the quote. The full quote is information wants to be free, but it also wants to be expensive. And so I think that's something to think about when we're working with our students that, you know, sometimes we need to get it through their heads that good information, you know, quote unquote, good information isn't necessarily something you can freely find. And, you know, that's why we can refer them back to the library's websites to be like, this is information you have paid for through your tuition dollars. Um, you know, because a lot of our students go to Google um, and they're like, oh, I want this article, but it's $40 and, you know, never pay $40 for an article. That's what the no. library is here for. Um, so and we, we can get it pretty readily for you through a consortium loan service or interlibrary yeah. loan. Yeah, and so we would love to hear your thoughts on this idea that information has value and, you know, all the terms of what value means, both monetary, legally, socially. There's any number of uh, ways that you can look at uh, how information has value, including uh, the ones that Megan just mentioned, uh, economic, financial, uh, educational, uh, uh, just uh, uh, political and ec political wise, economic wise as well. So are there any questions, any things that we can further elaborate on? If you are interested in reading the framework in its entirety, I am dropping the link to that in the chat. Um, this is an interesting one simply because it encompasses so much. Um, and sometimes um, it can lead to some interesting conversations with students who are like, well, what about my information? And you're like, yes, that has value too uh, of a different sort. And so it's, it's trying to tell students that um, sometimes the information they hold that they know also is of value. It might not be monetary, but it could be, you know, in personal experience and perspective and things like that. And uh, even though it may not be uh recognized, fully recognized at the time, it uh, could be, uh, their perspectives could be uh, uh, valuable at a later date, uh, uh, historical or otherwise uh, uh, value. So it may take some time for it to be fully recognized as, a, as valuable as it should be. And then depending on what you're teaching, this can be a useful area um, if you're working with this frame to show um, where marginalized voices have been excluded. You know, um, we like to discuss how the traditional publishing industry is predominantly white and male, thereby excluding so many other voices. And so this is a way where we can true. say 
we need to reorient the value out of traditional publishing. You know, this peer review, it's a process and it is an important process, but who exactly are those peer reviewers? And the industry is slow to change, but it is changing. Um, but this is another way where we can talk about, okay, well, whose voice is missing? And what value would they add if we heard from those voices? So that's another way to have a discussion in your classroom about when students are like, but I don't connect with this. And you can be like, okay, so whose voice is missing? What would they add? What would their experience and their expertise mean? But you, you just said that it's, you know, it's according to what you all have determined is worthy or valuable, or that it may be valuable historically some years down the line. I'm afraid that what you basically presented is sort of a reinforcement of the same system. So there's nothing to say, there's nothing to comment on. Well, I think there is, this is where, um, particularly in libraries, we, we are having those internal conversations because most librarians look like me, they are white women. Um, and that, that is a problem. Um, and same thing, you know, with publishing. Publishing is a lot of white men. And what this frame, the, the, the purpose of this frame was to show the different values that information have. And the frame itself speaks to how um, the power we give something can necessarily marginalize others. And we are trying to upset that. There's a lot of new journals coming out. This is where the open access movement is coming from to be like, why are we putting things behind paywall? Why are we making this so expensive to access? Why are we I marginalizing the these voices? I, uh, see the, I see the intention. Mm -hmm. The presentation that was presented reinforces it. Mm -hmm. And it and whatever conversations that are happening are happening, as you said, internally. That mm -hmm. never reaches the students, it never reaches the classroom. And at some point, you kind of basically kind of go along because the, the folks who are making the decisions as to, say for instance, in general education, the folks who are making the decisions as to what is valid, what isn't valid, what students are rewarded, which students are not, which students, uh, which professors um, are rewarded and which ones are not. The ones who are rewarded who go along with the consensus and the consensus is overwhelmingly white. Yes. And that's the way it is. You've reinforced it. There's no conversation here. And that's why I don't have any comments. Okay. Well, that's one reason we're holding these sessions is we'd love to get this feedback. Um, you know, when we do our information literacy instruction, we always meet with the professors to be like, okay, what does your particular class need? What do your students need so that we can tailor the content? Um, and the activities to that particular class in the hopes that we can better get at, uh, you know, what are the information needs of those particular students. Um, but again, this is a, another reason we're having these conversations is we'd like this feedback, we'd like this dialogue, you know, where we can improve our services and our teaching so that we can do better when we're teaching this kind of material. Thank you for that. Yeah. So I would say that the next time something like this, a topic like this comes up, mm -hmm. I think we probably need to do a, um, this needs to be less of a, an overall sort of white supremacy sort of presentation in which, you know, the firm fist of which is authority and which is not the authoritative voice mm -hmm. and what is taken seriously along with the backup of it's whoever's in charge. Um, and more about it being more conversational. The mm -hmm. presentation itself shut down any, any, any sense of or any space for conversation. Number two, you probably need to have some conversations with librarians who are much more actively and more aggressively resistant to white supremacy. And that means going outside the university because we don't have it here. That's my, that's my feedback. Thank you for those comments that, you know, we, as the outreach librarian, that is something I will take to heart in our work to try to expand um, the realm in which we work with students and, you know, providing more opportunities to connect them with, you know, 
it, other information. I, I'm trying to think of a better way to phrase that, um, you know, because the world goes beyond this university. Um, what they learn here necessarily impacts the community at large and their, you know, their lifelong learning skills. <clears throat> Is there any other comments or questions, suggestions? We'd love to hear it. This is a great time for us to hear that. Um, you know, there is a lot of density within these frameworks, like this one particular frame tries to cover all aspects of, um, you know, what it means for something to have value. Um, I think you could do a whole uh, conference on this. Yes. <laughs> Might and certainly the others as well, the other frameworks. Just want to give one more chance. Okay, not seeing anything come in right now. I do want to reiterate that a recording uh, of this today's session will be made available. Um, and I will get the slides from Chris and share those as well. If you attended live, you will get a certificate of attendance. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now to uh, allow for time to have discussion unrecorded if people prefer that.